All rise. We will live here. The International Criminal Court is now in session. L'audience de la Cour Penale Internationale est ouverte. Please be seated. We will just swap. Good morning. We are in open session, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Situation in the Republic of Kenya in the case of the prosecutor versus William Samoe Ruto and Joshua Arab Sang, case number ICC 0109-0111. Thank you. Appearances. Morning, Your Honours. Uh, for the prosecution, the team remains the same. Good morning, Your Honours. Weekends are represented by myself, Arshlan Singh, my colleague, James Mayweather. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honours. Uh, Mr. Sang is present. His team remains the same, with the addition of Lona Lanham. Um, yes, this morning, Mr. Ruto's uh, defence team is, is composed of uh, Shalini Jairaj, um, Mr. Kareem Khan, um, Ms. Lee Lowy, and Ms. Uh, Clara Gerard Rodriguez. Thank you. Thank you. And in Nairobi, Mr. Karate, we notice your presence. You finally arrived. Um, Mr. Karate, please make an effort to, to be uh, on location at the yes, time. Yes, Mr. President. Thank yes. you. We, 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 the court requires you to make a better effort to be on location on time. This is the third time now we've had to wait for you to arrive. Uh, you're a very experienced lawyer. You look like it, and you know the court doesn't wait for lawyers who appear before it. I thought I should say that. All right, we will continue with the examination in chief. Of uh, Mr. from Mr. Steinberg. Mr. Steinberg. Thank you, Your Honours. Good morning, Mr. Witness. And we are in open session. Thank you, sir. It is still the case that we expect you to finish today, is that it? Your, Your Honours, uh, your Honours will have noted that progress was rather slow yesterday. Um, I do tr hope to try to finish today but um, I'm less optimistic than I was this time yesterday. But I'll, do, I'll make my best efforts to finish this afternoon. Make your best effort, Mr. Steinberg, and then we'll try. Thank you. As court pleases. Morning, Mr. Witness. Do you hear me? Nakoskia, nakoskia, ujambo. Witness. Yes, I can hear you. Good morning. Mr. Witness, um, I'd just like to return to a matter I omitted to cover yesterday. Yesterday I asked you some questions about the first accused, Mr. Ruto. I'd just like to, before I continue discussing your statement, ask you one or two questions about the second accused, Mr. Sang. Can you please tell the court Mr. Witness, what do you know about accused number two, Mr. Joshua Arab Sang, and in particular as regards to the post-election violence in 2007 and 2008? Kusu bana sang mimi mimi si si fan as to Mr. Mr. Sang I was not a fan of Cas FM because Mr. Sang was in Cas FM sometimes 
I could listen to Cass FM radio, but I never followed the programs presented by Mr. Sang, who usually presented political programs. Sometimes I tuned uh, to that radio station and I listened to some uh, programs, but not the programs presented by Mr. Sang. Uh, what program or programs was it that Mr. Sang presented? in 2007 and early 2008. I do not remember. However, There were CAS FM programs being broadcast, but I was really not a fan of uh, CAS FM. You, you said a moment ago that you never followed the programs presented by Mr. Sang. Um, did you ever have occasion to listen to Mr. Sang's programs in late 2007 or early 2008? No. I usually listened to the programs of uh, Citizen Radio, not Cast FM. You say Mr. Sang usually presented political programs. How did you know that if you did not listen to his show? Mr. President, I object to that question. The witness did not say that. And uh, I'm following the transcript closely. That is not in the transcript. Your Honor, as I quote from page 4, line 3, but I never followed the programs presented by Mr. Sang, who usually presented political programs. I was, in fact, quoting directly from the transcript. Objection overruled. The question, uh, Mr. Witness, is how did you know Mr. Sang presented political programs if you didn't listen to his show? Wakati mungine kwa radio, unaweza kuu unatafuta, maybe, unatafuta citizen... It may happen that uh, you are trying to tune into a radio station and then you come across uh, programs from radio stations such as uh, Citizen and others. And uh, you may also casually listen to someone presenting a program without really uh, concentrating on it. I uh, didn't uh, regularly listen to Cass F. FM, even if uh, these were programs presented in my own language. So as I said before, I was not a Cass FM uh, fan. I liked to speak uh, in Swahili. Even my children do not know my dialect. So I usually listen to the radio, but not to Cass FM programs. So, do I understand you to be saying that while tuning into other programs, you may have come across Mr. Sang's show and listened to it casually? Is that correct? Olivia? Yes. Right. I'd like to then move back to the issue of your statement. We're in open session, so please be guarded in your answer, answers. 
you told the chamber yesterday that persons <coughs> one and person three on the PIS had told you to make a false statement to the investigators and had provided you with certain information to include in that statement. Is that a fair summary of what you told us yesterday? Can you kindly repeat your question, please? Yes, please. Try to listen carefully, sir. I'm just summarizing what you told us yesterday in relation to the making of your statement. I'll break it up to make it easier for you. You told us that you met with person one and person three in October and they told you to make a statement to the investigators in this case, correct? That is correct. And they gave you information and told you certain things that you you were to then tell to the prosecution investigators, is that right? That is correct. And you also told us that it was discussed how you were going to give testimony against Mr. Ruto and Mr. Sang so that you could get some money. Is that right? I am with you. So, were you specifically told to give evidence against both Mr. Ruto and Mr. Sang? It was not false testimony, but uh, testimony that uh, really did not hold water. What do you mean by that? Mr. Steinberg, was that answer really responsive? If you looked at your question, the point I make is whether that might have an interpretation issue. The witness appears to be answering a question about false testimony, and his mind is now turned to false testimony. I don't believe you use that expression precisely in your question. Maybe we should bring him back to your question. Yes. Your Honours, I, I did intend to go back and, and clearly the answer was not responsive. Whether it was interpretation or not, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> all right, I can do it in either order. I'll repeat my question. Please li listen carefully. When you met with persons number one and three, were you specifically told that the evidence you were going to give to the investigators should implicate both Mr. Ruto and Mr. Sang. Is that right? Yes. Now, your answer when I last asked the question was that this was not 
false testimony, but testimony that really did not hold water. Can you explain what you meant by that, please? This is what I meant to say. I was supposed to give testimony that was not actually correct. This means that I had to give a statement that would seem to be credible. So let me understand clearly the testimony or the evidence you were going to give, was it true or was it false? You have just used two terms, and uh, to answer your question, it was false testimony. You have asked me whether it was true or false testimony, and uh, I am going to tell you that it was false testimony. I see. Besides persons one and three, did anybody else tell you what to say in your statement? Regarding the preparation of my statement, I know only these two persons, persons number one and number three. Those were the people who uh, made me to go to location number four to give my statement. All right. And you've told us that persons number one and three told you that if you went and gave this to investigators, you would receive benefits such as location overseas, education for your children, etc. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Now, besides persons number one and person number three, did anybody else make you any promises of benefits in return for making this statement or this false statement to the prosecution? Mr. Prosecutor, mimi najua awa wili tu sijui mungina tena na siku. Mr. Prosecutor, I only know those two persons. I do not know anyone, so I can't tell you about anyone else who told me anything. All right, I'd like to turn then to the interview you had face to face, face to face with the two investigators in location four on the 3rd of November.
you've told the chamber that parts of what you said in this statement were true and other parts were false. Is that right? And that is true. I would now like to explore with you for a little while which parts of the statement you say are true and which parts you understand. <coughs> yes, I understand. Madam Court Officer, can I please ask that witness be provided with preferably a paper copy of Ken OTP 0087-0031, R05. Mr. Steinberg, a paper copy of Ken OTP 0087-0031, Redacted version 5 is presented to the witness. Thank you, Madam Court Officer. And for the Chamber, this is at tab 1 of the binder. Uh, Mr. Witness, could you please turn to page 3 of that document? The ERN is 0033. And Um, the, the document contains a number of explanations, starting at paragraph 1 on the previous page up until paragraph 13 on page 3. Can you confirm, Mr. Witness, were those um, explanations given to you by the investigators? Is it possible for you to help me and translate this statement into Swahili, please? Is it correct, Mr. Witness, that throughout the four days, three days, four days, that you gave this interview with the investigators, you spoke to them in English, isn't that right? The interview was conducted in English, but there was no interpreter. And as I mentioned earlier, they asked me to continue in English, yet I had some difficulty uh, speaking in English. But in any event, I was able to give the statement after all. So are you saying that you were able to understand the investigators, notwithstanding or despite the fact that uh, you, you were communicating in English? Yes, we were able to understand each other, but subsequently discovered that part of my statement that you gave was not consistent with what it could have been if an interpreter had been present. Um, I'll come back to that. Prior to your testifying in this case, is it correct that you were given an opportunity to 
with this statement by members of the Victims and Witnesses Unit. Please kindly repeat your question. Before you started testifying in this case, I think it was on Monday, did you, do you recall that you had a session with the members of the Victims and Witnesses Unit of the court at which you were able to go through your previous statements? Is that right? Yes, but I did not have enough time. I asked for more time and I was told that I did not have any more time because the trial would start on Monday. This was a long statement and I did not have enough time to read through its entirety. You mentioned. My question is this, during the course of that familiarization, you read the statement in English, didn't you? Can you hold that question? One second, one second. Interpreters, um, I'm looking at the transcript and what ended the last answer was I already mentioned. Is that all that was said or are there some missing words? The reason I say that it's I do not know whether I noticed a certain blip. If if I may assist, what I heard the witness say was as I already mentioned. I'm not sure whether I heard it correctly. We can proceed. Let's continue. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, I don't know if I that is correct, Your Honor. It's as I already mentioned. Thank you. The, the, the bench is. Uh, Mr. The President. Was reminded of it. And that was the, uh, the contact, as I understand, between VWU and the court last week. Sorry, I, I, there was overlapping. I Sorry. did not hear. Let, let you. me start again. Yes, yeah, start again. I, I, I thought it not inappropriate for me to, to remind um, the, uh, the bench of that correspondence last week, as I understand it, or an email from VWU relating to this witness's, quote, panic, unquote, and wanting the trial to be as part of the con context of what the witness is now saying in terms of the statement. I'd forgotten it, and I was just reminded of it, and I thought it was a, a useful um, thing to bear in mind. It, it would have been safer, Mr. Hooper, brought that thing up in your cross-examination. Um, continue, Mr. Stamper. Yes. Mr. Witness, I was just whether it was not let me make it simpler. When you read your statement last week with the VWU, you read it in English. Is that correct? The VW staff gave me the statement. They also made available an interpreter to assist through the statement. I see. Well, as we go through the statement, you can advise us of any matters that you say were any 
errors that you say were the product of the lack of interpretation. All right? That is fine by me. Very fine by me. All right. I'd like to direct your attention, please, to paragraph 15. Paragraph 14, you give certain details that you've already confirmed to be true. Paragraph 15, however, and I'll read it out, states, well, I'll have to do it with the as we're in public session. You say, in 1997, my parents bought a land in location number one. There. So before the violence in 2007 to 2008, I lived with my family in location number one. I had a farm and cows. Location number one is in a certain sublocation I won't mention. And I think we can safely say in the turbo division of the Wasan Gishu district, Rift Valley province. Do you see that? No, no. Yes, I can see that. And Firstly, is that what you told the investigators? Are you satisfied that they recorded correctly what you told them? Evil. Yes. And is that true or is that false, that you were living in location number one in 2000? and 2008. No. You mean it's not true that you were living there? Nikweli kwamba it is true that my parents went to Talbo. So, iyo sehemu wa maandika hapo ni ya namba moja. Part of that statement in relation to location number one is incorrect. We did not move to location number one. We moved to location number three instead. The location which is not mentioned is the location to which my parents moved before I went to number three after my marriage. The name of that location is not on the PIS form and it is after I got married that I moved to location number three. The date mentioned is in relation to the time when I was in location number three instead of location number one as appears on the document. your parents bought land in location number one in 1997. Is that what you're saying? Sequel. It is not correct. 
explain, well, firstly, uh, is this false statement about where you were living something that you made up, or is this something you were told by persons number one and three to tell the investigators? Ningependa kusema This is what I, I would like to say. Which you have just read out to me tallies with what I discussed with number one and number three, namely the information that I was supposed to provide. And can you explain why it was necessary for you to lie to the investigators about the place where you were living in 2007 and 2000? Kama nilivya sema leo. Yesterday, I already stated what I am going to repeat now. What happened is that number one and number three told me that even if I lied, I have to live in location number three. I had um, be uh, that I was living at location number one, but that thereafter I will be relocated, and so in any event, I would receive something that would put all of this matter in the past and that would enable me to move forward, to move away. I'm afraid that doesn't make much sense to me, so let me ask you some further questions. Um, Mr. Steinberg, let's avoid the comment, please. If you, if you don't understand, you can ask another question, try and clarify. That says that what I've said makes no sense to you. Very well, Your Honor. Mm. Mr. Witness, the Tell the investigator. Just, just let me start from the beginning. What was the reason why you were going to lie to the investigators? I do not understand your question. I still do not understand your question. All right. Mr. Mr. Witness, do, do you normally tell lies for no reason? Or if you tell lies as you did to the investigators in the statement, is there a reason for telling those lies? Sababu, sababu ya kwanza ambaye nilisema jana na nimerudia leo ni kwamba. Yesterday I gave the first reason and I'm going to repeat it now. Number one, number three and I met in a hotel in Eldoret. We had discussions for a period of three hours. They told me that I would be relocated and that a new name, I would go abroad, I will be given money, and my children will be able to go to school. And other benefits will flow from that relocation, 
uh, to my benefit and to the benefit of my family. So we were poor people, unemployed, living in those circumstances. And for those reasons, I felt that I was going to have a better life. I had no choice. That was an opportunity for me uh, not to miss in order to uh, benefit from all those promises. L let me say, uh, with your leave. Did you ask me to stop? Um, no, I haven't, but have you finished answering the question? Now, if you look at the statement, is that number one and number two used all, or, or rather, number one used all possible strategies to uh, train me to say what needed to be said, and I bought into it. And so without that trap, I would not be here before you testifying. So, why was it necessary, number one and three, for you to lie about the place where you lived? With your permission, Mr. President, before the witness answers, may I take issue with uh, the issue of translation? At line... Uh, The witness said that with person number one and number two used every strategy to persuade me not to train me. Kushawishi, uh, that is the Kiswahili word, and uh, I a lot of difference between training and persuading, and I thought I, it's something that I really need to highlight. A witness. We want to clarify. Yes, from, Mr. President. Yeah, we want to clarify from you something you said in your last answer in relation to person number one and number three. Did you say that they used all strategy to try, or did you say they used? Or strategy to persuade you that, that you said. Namanisha, Mr. President, Kwamba Kusha. Mr. President, when I use the word. Kushawishi, it means having a discussion with somebody and there is an intention to share ideas in such a way as to convince the other person that what he is being told is true so that the person may change his or her position. So that is, that was in relation to the promises that are mentioned in the statement. Thank you. So the word you used was kusha wisha. Kusha wisha. Convince in English. Convince. Thank you. Yeah. Now we will continue, Mr. Stein. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Witness, my last question was not answered yet. And that is, why was it necessary, according to persons number one and three, for you to lie to the investigators about the place where you lived? Uh, 
sasa ulikuwa umeuliza kwamba kwanza you just put a question to me uh, to i am the one who made the statement my statement and i said yes then you asked me whether i had anything to statement and i said that some of the information in the statement is correct while some of the information is incorrect now regarding paragraph 15 let me state again and provide further number one and number three gave me some information and told me that this was the information that i should give to the investigators when they ask me questions amounting to a false statement but that i should make the statement to appear to be credible you are I did not understand why they brought me into this arrangement. What they told me on that day when we met at that hotel is that I should make or give a statement which is incorrect and that was in relation to the to, to a business it's as if one were adding some salt to a to a story and i don't know what further information i can provide well, mr witness i'm afraid you've given a long explanation but you haven't addressed the question which i put to you and I won't move on until we have an answer. So I'm not asking you about the circumstances you came to make the statement. All I want to know from you is why was it necessary to live where you were living? Can you just answer that question, please? The reason is as follows. The reason uh, is as follows. Persons number one and three provided me with information for this statement against a promise. I don't know how else I can explain this to you. Maybe you, you, you want to give me a little more time to think through a possible answer for you. All right, witness. Did person number one and person number two tell you to lie about where you lived? If they did, why would they do that? Do you know why they would tell you where you lived? Ndiyo, sababu Aikuwa na tafauti niseme Pale ukweli na Yes, you know There was no difference Between a lie and the truth They had made promises to me And even If everybody was going to know That 
information, I would be, I would still be relocated and I would have another name. And the statement would completely be meaningless. They told me that I was going to be relocated, I was going to have money, my life was going to improve. And that is why I said that sort of benefit or those benefits in mind important to you is that the story you told the investigators is a story they would believe Mojawapoya one of the reasons for that was that they asked me to give a false statement. Everything we discussed was related to the case that uh, we had in mind. We, I was told that if you said this, it will seem credible. It would mean that you have uh, the testimony. That is what they said. Does that mean you wanted to tell the investigators a story or stories that would seem credible to them? Who were supposed to believe my statement? The investigators or those two persons? The investigators. Was it important to you for the investigators of the Office of the Prosecutor? to believe you. Was that something you wanted? Yes. I was supposed to give some weight to my statement. Mr. Steinberg. Thank you, Your Honours. And bearing in mind you had never lived in location number one, what do you think would happen if investigators went to location number one and asked the people living there if they knew you? It would be a mistake. A mistake by who? On my part. If the investigators found that you did not, in fact, live in location number one, do you think you still would have got all the benefits you were expecting? Well, you know, the 
based on what they told me well let me explain they told me all those things because investigations had been carried out at location 4 if the investigation had been carried out correctly they would have gone to where we were and in all the surrounding areas but these people told me that uh, those other people are very far away they will not come here and it is uh, for that reason that statement the way we did all right let me just clarify two things firstly when you say they told me you're referring to persons one and Devia. Yes. And then you said that they told me those things because investigations had been carried out at location four. Is that what you meant to say? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I see. Um, one last question before I move on. Location 3 and Location 1, which one is closer to Turbo Town Center? Location 3? Location 3. Yes, in fact, if I understand your evidence, location one is quite far away from Turbo Town Center, is that right? Devia. That's correct. When you gave your statement to the investigators and when you were having the persons one and three. Were you aware that the charges in this case, or the, the relevant charge in this case, relates to Turbo Town itself? Did you know that? Devia. Yes. All right. The last paragraph 15 reads, In the past, the population of Location 1 was mixed, but after the violence in 1992, most of the Kikuyu had left Location 1 and some had gone to Turbo Town. Is that correct or is that incorrect? Only paragraph 16. Are you referring to paragraph 16? No, I said paragraph 15, and it's the last sentence. Just listen to the interpreter. I'll read it out. The population of location 1 was mixed, but after the violence in 1992, had left location 1 and some had gone to Turbo Town. Is that right? That is correct. 
And is that what you told the investigators? Kulingana na hiyo kuama kwa hawa watu ni ukweli. Regarding the movement of the population, uh, that is true. Even though I was not at that time, I heard that uh, those people moved uh, at that time because of the war. Is maybe go brief, briefly into private session for the first two sentences of paragraph 16, please. Private session. We are in open session, Mr. President. Um, Madam Court Officer, can you please either call up or provide a copy of Annex 1 to the statement, to the witness's statement, that's Ken OTP 00870054, as I said, 2 of the prosecution bundle. Mr. Steinberg, an electronic copy of Ken OTP 0087-0054 is presented. And can I just confirm that this is not broadcast outside the courtroom? Mr. President, no, Mr. Steinberg, this uh, document is only shown to the witness from our side. Confirm that likewise here. I'm grateful, thank you. Um, Mr. Witness, if you look at the bottom right hand <coughs> corner of this sketch, is that your name and signature that appear there? Divya. Yes. And is this the, the sketch that you you referred to a moment ago uh, when we were reading your your? Is that right? Dear. Yes. Can you confirm, sir, whether the details contained in this sketch are correct and accurate as far as you are aware, or if there's anything in here which is false? Mr. Some of the details are correct, while others are not. Please point out to us those details that are not correct. Remember, we're in open session, so please be careful. Sasa, sekuelewe sababu tuko kwa hatara, sasa nita... I do not understand you. We 
how do you expect me to give you explanations about this? We will have to do this in private session, but I note the time. Perhaps we can resume this after the short adjournment. Yes, we will take our morning break now. Then we will come back in 30 minutes. The court will rise. Age catching up with you. Mm -hmm.